feeling too good, but I wanted to go over this article that I found online because as I'm studying scripture, uh, this article is entitled To Lead for a Sword. And as I'm going through the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the prophets and all those things, I'm looking really back into a lot of, of Hebrew things. Uh, uh, what the children of Israel did and the foreigners who sojourned with them out of Egypt and into the land of Canaan and to where we are today, the title caught my eye. As I read through this, and I'll provide the link in the description box, as I read this article, uh, I saw some, some huge red flags that popped out, and I just wanted to, to give my two cents and show the example of what can happen when you take one scripture out of context and you build a teaching around it and how it shows conflict or creates conflict with the whole counsel of God. And that's very dangerous because anybody can take one scripture out of context and then do this pick-and-choose theology thing uh, to bring about something that isn't biblical. Um, the first thing it starts off is uh, the Talit for the Sword article. It says the word garment is translated from the Greek word himation. In the Greek, it is not just sort of any garment as the Greek lexicon might have you believe. On the contrary, it was worn over clothes like a cloak. It would have been the closest thing the Greeks had to compare to the Jewish prayer shawl. Okay, this kind of raises up a red flag because it's saying don't trust the Greek lexicon. Okay, this is what it really means. So in other words, there's some hidden esoteric meaning or knowledge behind this. And this is just setting up as saying, okay, well, trust what I say instead of what we can actually prove uh, with references in Scripture. And it really gets to the point where they translate uh, Luke 22, 36. Of, uh, let me just get into this. But anyway, here's the Scripture, and it says, uh, but Jesus said, But now he that has a purse, let him take it and treat it as a beggar's bag. And he without a sword, let him sell his to lead and buy one. I haven't found any uh, scriptures or translations that let him sell his to lead and buy a sword. Uh, that is totally against what we've seen for scripture in the New Testament on what that passage means. Because now this is implying that uh, Yeshua is commanding his disciples to sin against God, uh, because God commanded them to wear the fringes, the tallit, and now Yeshua is commanding them to get rid of their tallit and to buy swords. And it's interesting because, first of all, when we look at Scripture, we see that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, Yeshua stated that He and the Father are one, and so or echad. So we know that what Yeshua says will not conflict with what God says. And, and what we see here is we see in Scripture that, uh, not in here, but in Scripture, that God is not, He doesn't tempt anybody to sin. He neither does He command people to sin. We see that in Scripture. Um, but that each of us, when we're tempted by our own fleshly desires. So God never commands us to sin, and He never tempts us with sin. Um, but yet here, what we have, according to the translation that Divine Coder uses, is that Yeshua is commanding his disciples to sin. And so that is a huge, huge red flag. As you read through the rest of this article, it's interesting because um, it's talking about personal safety. Basically, it's taking the, uh, the position that you're never supposed to defend yourself with a weapon. And, uh, you know, that, in other words, what you're doing when Yeshua said this uh, that one is effectively trading one's faith for a weapon. Therefore, in turn, one is literally rejecting the offer of salvation and attempting to bring one's own salvation by foolishly relying upon oneself or weapons. The Bible says no one can save himself, and if he tries to save his own life, he will, he will lose it. Honestly, the Word of God cannot be more clear. Uh, the problem is, <clears throat> by making this assumption and not looking at the rest of Scripture, we're coming up... Uh, Divine Coder has come up with a teaching saying that you cannot defend yourself. Uh, and more, the, the biggest conflict we see is that uh, what they're saying in this article is that Jesus is commanding his disciples to sin. And yet we know by scripture that that doesn't happen. Now I went through and I left a reply on the website uh, for that article. I imagine it might be deleted because usually when... Uh, you bring up the rest, the whole counsel of God. Uh, people don't like it when it attacks their specific doctrine to which they pick and choose uh, scriptures out of context to, to, to try to support that false teaching. So here's my response I wanted to go over. It's not all-inclusive, but I just want to give you uh, an example uh, of what we're seeing in scripture. Uh, this article, the Tlaib 
for a sword, a uh, sword for a tleet for a sword, offers no proof to sell your sword and to buy back your tleet. That is a phrase used in, in the article. The hermeneutics used here is severely lacking. It ignores all the other passages where Scripture gives examples of people defending themselves with weapons. In other words, this conclusion is based on one out-of-context Scripture and private interpretation, which we are commanded not to do. Okay, the claim or teaching to be conclusive, you must take into account the Old Testament and the New Testament Scriptures. Remember, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we'll see examples uh, when we investigate the use of weapons in self-defense in Scripture. Now, if the claim that we are to also sell our sword and buy back our tleed is claimed by this article, and that having a weapon means one has traded away their salvation, then that is a departure from God's Word in multiple places. This is what we see in Scripture. In Exodus 20, 13, it says, Thou shalt not murder. Notice it does not say, Thou shalt not kill at all. Uh, but we do see in Exodus 22, 2, where it gives examples that if a thief is found breaking in and he is struck that he dies, there shall be no guilt for his bloodshed. This shows that during a home invasion or a break-in at night, that there is no guilt for defending oneself, their family, and or their possessions. So if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then why would God institute, set about a, a law, a command, a principle, a standard that applies in the Old Testament, but then suddenly doesn't apply in the New Testament, and Yeshua went totally against it and commanded, you know, it goes along with the Talit, wearing the fringes. Uh, it says that you will do this forever as a sign. Um, but Yeshua, you know, according to them, divine coder, that, uh, you know, don't do that, go buy a sword. So uh, we go on to 1 Samuel 13, 16 through 23, shows the problems that occur when a nation has no swords or weapons in which to defend themselves. So again, we see this principle. We see God's commands, his instructions, his standards, his precepts, uh, and his principles. So we see that those who are unable to defend themselves get into big trouble, and we see that all through Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, uh, in 1 Samuel 13. Nehemiah 4, 8 through 23 shows that when people were building a the wall, they had weapons to defend themselves. And if you'll notice that in both Samuel and Nehemiah, that there was no rebuke or correction either given by God, the prophets, or the priests. So again, defending oneself is okay, according to Scripture. We see this especially in Esther 8.11. By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives. Hmm, really interesting. To destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them. Both little children and women to plunder their possessions. So again, this shows that God gave no correction and gave actually the okay or the permission uh, for the people that they could protect their lives, and they did so with weapons uh, against wants and violence and those who wanted to take their possession. So again, here's another scripture showing that we can defend ourselves, at least in the Old Testament. Now here's what's interesting, because if we look at the whole context of Luke 22, verses 36 through 38, uh, and you read that whole big section, but it, then he said to them, But now he who has a money bag, let him take it, and likewise a knapsack. And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say to you, this was written, is written, must still be accomplished in me. For he was numbered with the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. So he said to them, Look, here are two swords. Two of his disciples said, Look, here's two swords. And Yeshua, he said to them, It is enough. Uh, notice divine coders what that individual states. In other words, one is effectively trading one's salvation for a weapon. In turn, one is literally rejecting the offer of salvation and to bring about one's own salvation by foolishly re, uh, relying upon oneself. The problem is, that is not what we see in Scripture. However, uh, this divine coder individual forgets to lurk, look at verse 38 where Yeshua states, Lord, look, uh, where the disciples state, we have two swords, and he said to them, it is enough. Uh, so Yeshua, according to divine coder, is actually uh, is telling at least two of his, uh, his disciples that they have traded away their salvation, and that is good. That is enough. That, that's hogwash, actually. Enough is defined as strongs, as Hikanos, G2425, as sufficient. So here we have Divine Coder claiming that it is sufficient for people to lose their salvation, and Yeshua said it was okay. Scripture states that God wants that none should perish, 2 Peter 3, 9. Uh, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
So according to divine coder, Yeshua was saying it's sufficient that two of the, tw uh, the disciples traded away their salvation and there is no uh, follow-up rebuke or correction. That is so unlike Jesus, Yeshua, that we see in the rest of the, of the Gospels, it's not even funny. So we see that danger, that red flag of, wait a second, now they're making a claim that takes and is creating a Yeshua, creating a different Jesus. Uh, when we look at the character and the nature of Yeshua in, in all the other Gospels. So anyway, saying that it's, of course not. Uh, this is proof positive that divine coder is not correctly dividing the word of God and that instead is making a huge theological error by taking one scripture out of context and trying to make a teaching that obviously conflicts with the rest of scripture. Uh, if we look at John 18 verses 10 through 11 where Simon Peter, having drew his sword, uh, cut off the high priest's uh, servant's ear. And uh, so Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup from which my father has given me? Divine Coder ignores the fact that Yeshua did not command Simon Peter to get rid of his sword totally, but to put it back in its sheath. This also shows that Simon Peter had a sword for quite some time, and apparently Yeshua continued to let Simon live in sin. Wow, that's the logic that Divine Coder has. Of course not. This shows that there is indeed a time for everything as stated in Ecclesiastes 3. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. Never do we see Yeshua uh, commands anyone to totally get rid of their weapon because there is a right time to defend oneself, their family, or their loved ones, or their possessions. As we see in the Old Testament, and Yeshua never commands us or stops that commandment, instruction, or precept in the New Testament. Now it's interesting because we go back to David. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart, and in Psalm 1834 he says, He teaches my hands to make war, war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. And then in Psalm 144, 1, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. So again, here we see that um, if we were to not totally defend ourselves, then we would see God commanding this in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And David would not have made such a claim. Um, but again, this is just more biblical proof disproving the claim that uh, Divine Coders has put up. Uh, the next one you go at, it says... We do not see any command to not defend ourselves with weapons. Uh, however, Yeshua does warn his followers that those who live by the sword die by the sword, as in Matthew 26, 30, uh, 52. This shows that we as believers are not to infringe upon the life, liberty of others or their possessions, stealing, killing, and taking their goods. That, that is not condoned. And if one continues to do this, it will result in their death, either in this world or in the world to come in eternity, the separation from God for continuing in sin. We see that in Revelation. So we, again, we see that this disproves uh, divine coders claim that uh, if you have a sword, you have traded away your salvation. In Psalms 82, 4, it says, deliver the poor and the needy, free them from the hand of the wicked. <clears throat> Here we see the command to defend the poor and the needy with commands to not use weapons. No, of course not. If we were to not defend with weapons, then we would certainly see that in Scripture, but Divine Coder doesn't offer any other Scriptures because there are none. And so, uh, again, we see more proof of this unbiblical teaching. Uh, the other thing we see is that the New Testament Scriptures that tell us that we are to take care of the orphan, the widow, the poor, our families, uh, to love our families and our wives, our children, uh, the old, the infirmed, and things like that, and protecting them from wanton acts of violence is indeed uh, an act of love. Now, so if we idly stand by and not defend them, we are in sin. It's a sin by omission, not a sin of commission. Uh, the question I ask those such as Divine Coder who come up with these uh, teachings uh, based on one out-of-context scripture is that if somebody was being tortured, raped, and somebody's trying to kill that individual, would you stand there idly by it and not defend them uh, with lethal force with a firearm? or any weapon of that matter. Um, and they say, well, you know, I would just pray for God. Well, really, are you uh, protecting, are you loving those people by saying, you know, just go ahead and rape them, you know, just go ahead and torture them and murder them and kill them, even though we are commanded to protect uh, the orphans and the widows and the poor and the needy. So again, we see, look at the big picture of God's Word, uh, what Divine Coder is putting out here, that when you uh, buy a weapon, that you are trading away your salvation, that is not the case indeed. 
Now, there are more scriptures and examples, but I, I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to come across, is that we as believers can protect and defend with weapons. It is not mandated or commanded, uh, just as somebody was getting raped in front of me, I don't have to use a firearm or a knife. I can go in there and I can physically try to stop that wanton act of violence to protect them. So I'm not saying that everyone must have a weapon or a firearm, but what I'm saying is don't come off and say that if you have a weapon or a firearm that you have traded away your salvation as Divine Coder has. Um, the big thing is, is that I hope that I never have to use a weapon to use lethal force against somebody else because I don't want that for anybody. But again, in the training that I do with firearms and what I see in Scripture, that that is entirely a possibility. So uh, we just need to remember that. But there is a time that after Yeshua's return that there will be no need for weapons. As Isaiah 2, 4 states, it says, He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. He shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But until that time, we still have others who want to commit one acts of violence against us, do harm against me and my family and others. And we do have that duty to protect life because it is sacred. Uh, yes, God's word does say vengeance is mine, but as we see in Scripture in the Old and the New Testament, we can defend ourselves and that is not considered uh, vengeance. So for those people that are reading my, my reply, this is what I put down, I, and I imagine uh, he or she will delete my post. Uh, usually when I bring out the whole counsel of God, the whole scripture, uh, the big picture, so to speak, of, of self-defense, uh, people will delete the post because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear scripture. But the problem is if you come up with a teaching that causes conflicts in so many different areas, like Yeshua tempting or tempt, commanding his uh, disciples to sin, or claiming that, hey, two of you have swords, that is enough, that it's sufficient for two of you to trade away your salvation. Uh, that is such gross negligence of biblical hermeneutics and, and study and research of what we see. It is entirely a different message. And we were warned not to, to put up with such things. Uh, so I'm offering this correction, this rebuke. Get back to God's word. Now, if you don't want to pick up a firearm or a weapon of any choice, that is your own choice. That is between you and God. But don't bring about a teaching that creates such heresy of Yeshua tempting or commanding his people, to, his disciples, to go against what God commanded in the Old Testament. Because then we know that is a different message. And we know that, that God and Yeshua are one. Um, so anyway, it ends up, please notice that divine coders made the claim of having a sword is trading away your salvation. And scripture shows that Yeshua... Uh, and what he did in other places, that that is not the case. Divine Coder's logic would have you believe that Yeshua was claiming that it was good or it was enough or it was sufficient that at least two of his disciples traded away their salvation uh, and got those swords, and that was good. Uh, see the dangers of taking one scripture out of context? Yes, that is huge. So anyway, uh, I would ask that you would repent, uh, study God's word to show yourself approved to rightly divide the word of God, and... <clears throat> Be careful what you do. And, you know, a lot of us have done this. A lot of us have taken teachings that we've heard from pastors and people on pulpits and TV ministers and, and online and things like that. And we latch on to this, uh, this thing and, and we don't test it against the whole of Scripture. And so what ends up with is causing a lot of conflicts all over the place, red flags everywhere. Uh, it is truly a different message than what Paul preached. And even Paul says if he himself or an angel came and presents a different message, uh, that person is to be accursed. And we can see that the dangers of making such claims that uh, you traded, you have literally, you have literally traded away your salvation because you have a sword, uh, and, and the claim that Yeshua is commanding his disciples to sin, uh, we don't see that anywhere in Scripture. Of course, also, Divine Coder also tries to make the claim that, oh, he was testing them. Uh, never do we see in any other example how Yeshua tested his disciples. It was questions. Uh, he presented things, and they pretty much opened their mouth and put their foot into their mouth, in their own mouths, and then he corrected them. Don't you know the scriptures? Haven't you read? Uh, you've been with me for so long. Don't you know? You know, never do we see him commanding them to sin. And, of course, when uh, Divine Coder leaves out uh, Luke twenty-two thirty-eight, 38, uh, and... 
you know, that's what you get, is that you can make up the false teaching of saying, hey, you've traded, if you have a weapon, you've traded away your salvation. Uh, we know in Ecclesiastes, there's a time to kill, a time to heal, build up the whole nine yards. So, uh, in the end, I'd just like to say that you need to be very careful. I haven't looked at the rest of the Divine Coders uh, web press blog site, um, but that was the only article that I looked at. But that just shows the importance of testing everything. Um, because God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if God commanded that we can defend ourselves in the Old Testament, and Yeshua never commanded us to not do that in the New Testament, then we can still see that as today, those covenants are still binding. Those things are forever. Until at the time of which we do not need those, those weapons of war and self-defense, because when Yeshua returns, uh, there will be that judgment, and he will set up his kingdom. So anyway, I just wanted to go over that and kind of kind of make you wary, aware of what's going on, to be mindful of when you look at scriptures and teachings, to look at the whole counsel of God and not just one scripture out of context. And where people start saying, well, that's not what this really means, this is what it really means, and this is what it really means, and this is hidden in esoteric knowledge, uh, that's when little flags start popping up saying, you know, danger, Will Robinson, danger. Uh, the importance of testing everything and studying to show yourself approved is so so important during these last days. It's not even funny. Um, because if a little bit of leaven gets in, then that's going to result. Then how much farther, how much more leaven, how much more sin, heresy, and false teaching is going to come about? And I'm not saying this, that, that I have arrived or, or my uh, two cents or teaching on Scripture is, is above reproach. Uh, I would hope that people would, would come that if I'm teaching something wrong to show me like I did in my response with multiple scriptures and not just using something out of context but to show the whole counsel of God of where I am wrong. And so that way I can, can repent and get back to that narrow path of salvation. Um, but that's my attitude. That's the scripture's attitude that, that we should be open to correction. Because if we walk in false teaching, that's a bad thing. And we don't want to, we want to be God's uh, servants. We want to be his high priests. We're a nation of priests to do his good works. Uh, but when we start taking and making claims that Yeshua commanded people to sin, um, things like that, that it was sufficient for two of his disciples to have traded away their salvation with no follow-up correction or rebuke, that just opens up so much false teaching and holes in Scripture, it's not even funny. So anyway, um, that's my two cents. That's what I see in Scripture, uh, looking at the whole counsel of God, and I hope you take that into consideration. So, and, and for me, there's things that I was taught and things that I believed and that I did not test according to Scripture. I didn't test everything as commanded, and there's, there's false teaching, and I'm continuing to grow. But when I'm made aware of those errors and of those beliefs that were passed on to me that are not in accordance with Scripture, with the whole counsel of God, uh, that's when it comes to time to repent, okay? So we should be ever learning, ever studying, ever testing, uh, you know, examining ourselves to see if we're in the faith, is what the New Testament says. So, <clears throat> again, when it comes to self-defense, it is a personal choice, but don't say that Yeshua uh, commanded us not to, uh, because we already saw the problems with that, but that is a personal choice on whether you want to or not. Um, but when you start getting to the point of saying, hey, you know, Yeshua commanded his, his people to, to sin and to disobey God and his commandments, his instructions, his precepts, his standards, his statutes, that's where you start creating a different Jesus than the Yeshua we see, the Messiah, who came and took away the sins of the world. So anyway... Just, just something to think about. So that's it. I hope you enjoy uh, the discussion and uh, remember uh, to study God's word and to follow him and to have that relationship and to do his good works um, as we're commanded. Read First John. That's a great book. And you'll see how we are to obey God's law. And that Paul said that his law is holy, righteous, and good. If we're obedient, if we disobey, uh, there's curses. There, you're going to reap what you sow for, for breaking the law. But when we walk in obedience, just as the commandments that I give my daughter and she walks in obedience, that is a blessing to her. So as we walk in the obedience of God's word, his principles, statutes, and instructions, it brings life and blessing. 
Um, it's not that name and claim and thing, but the biggest blessing that we can have is that we can have peace that passes all understanding in this crazy world that we live in with violence and, and all the things that are going wrong with our economy. He gives us peace. So anyway, um, that's enough for rambling. So take care, God bless, and we'll see you on the next video. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Yeshua referenced Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Romans 3, verses 30 and 31.